Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, in the last few videos, we've gone through the process of setting up the interface for texture painting. We've blocked out our colors, and we've also added a color layer to add a few details to the face. The one thing you may notice here is that I've renamed my texture slots and I've renamed them to Color2048, Color Details 2048 The problem is, is that I've discovered there may be a little bit of a bug um, in Blender or maybe in my graphics card, I don't know which, that is causing me not to be able to see the textures when the size of the images are 4096. So when, if I'm using textures larger than 2048, the paint tools work, but I can't see them in my 3D view. What I've done is I've kind of um, scaled down the images to 2048 and it seems to work fine. So let's take a look at how we might um, paint some bump information on our character here. So let's say we want to work on the vest here and we wanna lay down some um, leather uh, texture as well as some bump information. So to add a new texture paint slot, we just go to add texture paint slot and this time we're gonna choose normal. And uh, we'll call this uh, maybe bump and we'll change these to 2048. And this time, instead of taking the alpha all the way down, what I'm gonna do is change this to 0.5 or a medium gray here. The thing about bump information here is that it's mainly looking at grayscale and anything white appears to be pushed out and anything black appears to be pushed in. So let's take a look at how that works here. I'm going to click OK and there is my bump channel. Now I'm going to come over here to my texture layers and rename this one from normal to bump as well. So here is my bump map. Um, let me zoom in here on the vest. And if we look at this, what we can do, let's take a look at, let's go back here and select the normal brush. And here I will also change these to 0.5, just a medium gray, so we can kind of begin at the same point here. And what I'm gonna do is just take this uh, slider and drag it up to be more white and then paint here and you can see what it what it does. It gives us the impression that we're actually sculpting on the object. Now if I drag this down to the black, as I said, black pushes in. So now we see that it looks like it's being pushed in, when in reality it's just a grayscale stroke here. What I would like to do for the leather texture is actually create a brand new brush that is just going to be for the leather. So I'm going to come up here to the brush icon and just click the plus here and we will call this leather. Now what let's do is let's bring in a texture for our stencil. A stencil can be used to kind of paint through to apply a, a, an image uh, texture. So what we need to do is bring that image into here and then change our brush mapping to stencil. But for now, let's go over here. Let's come over to here and select this. And here we can bring in a texture to be our brush. So what I'm going to do is click on New and then click on Open. And let's bring in that scuffed leather texture that we had that we were working with earlier. Now let's change our brush mapping to stencil. And if we hover over the 3D view, you can see it overlays that image over our 3D view. 
and it does it over here too, but I just want to move that. So what let's do is let's move this around and uh, place it where we want. Now the normal tools moves the uh, uh, the the viewport here, but if you right click and drag, you can move the stencil around. If you right click and press shift, you can zoom it in and out. And if you right click and press control, you can rotate it. So I'm going to get it about like this, maybe something like that. Now what we're going to do is paint through it. Um, when when we when I paint through something like this, I like to be able to see it when I'm painting. I like for it to turn off when I'm painting. So I'm going to go to options and under texture alpha here, I'm going to turn this on. So now let's go back. And I'm going to make this a little bit whiter here. Make my brush a little bit bigger. Bring the strength down some because we don't need it quite that heavy. And I want to paint on this color details um, slot first. What I also need to do is come down here and choose the face select mode so that I can press the L key and just choose the vest here. Now all I'm going to do is just paint right on the vest. And that will begin to paint some of that uh, texture through the stencil onto the vest. Now here's the fun part. I'm going to leave everything just where it, where it is and I'm going to switch over to the bump channel. And now I'm going to paint again in the same way. Now look at what it's doing. It is actually painting bump information here that exactly matches the color that I just painted down as well. So here, let me go back to tools and then turn off the stencil here by going to tiled and let me turn this off. Now look at what we've done here. We've painted color it's true, but we've also painted bump information. Now, and we can back this off a bit if we if we think it's too too much. But let's keep going around here, and maybe even press the three key here. Let me get rid of the background image. And now let's do the same thing from the uh, side view. So I'm going to go back to the color details and I'm going to go back to my stencil, which is right down here under the bump mapping, and then begin painting again for the color now. So I'm going to lay down some more color here. Oh, got a choose the vest. Now I'm going to lay down some more color here. And then I'm going to go immediately over to the bump and lay down some more of the bump. There we go. Now I'll do it in the back. So go to the color. Go to the bump and just do this all the way around. Now there are of course lots of ways to use the paint tools for uh, texturing and creating bump information. This is just one way that I like to do this and I thought it'd be kind of a fun thing to show. Alright, so let's take a look at it now. Let's turn off the stencil Let's turn off face selection and let's just bring this full screen now. So we've got some issues. There are some problems with the color and the, some problems with the bump, but we can smooth out these problems and uh, fix it up here. So let's go back to the color here 
And what let's do is, let's go back to our normal brush that does not have a stencil in it. Let's sample a color here. Maybe make it a little bit lighter. Bring the strength down and now we can just paint over this to kind of smooth out the colors. I'm going to also paint right on the vest here just to smooth out the color transition some so it isn't quite so harsh. And now that I've done that, I'm going to go back to the bump channel. And now I'm going to go back to my medium gray here, just, just typing 0.5 into there. And as I paint with a neutral gray, it's going to take back some of that bump so it isn't quite so harsh. So I don't want it to be quite that pronounced. So I'll just kind of erase it back a little bit and blend everything in together. So there we go. We've got now some differentiation on the vest as well as a little bit of bump information to catch the light. And of course, the thing that I really need to do here is to save this information. This image has not yet been saved to the hard drive, so I need to do that. If I were to come in here and click on this Save All Images button, let's see what happens. It gives me an error here. Why is that? Well, it's because it can only save images that have previously been saved to the hard drive. This one is sitting in memory, but it hasn't been saved to the hard drive yet. So let's go ahead and save this to the hard drive. Let's go image, save as image, and we'll just call it bump and save as image. Now if I made a change to this, let's make sure I'm, okay, if I just, uh, I don't know, if I just come over here and paint that, that will make a change here, right? Now I should be able to come over here to my save all images button, hit that, and it saves them all. So that's nice. Well, let's give this a try with the pants, actually. Let's, uh, let's go in here and let's create a new brush and we'll call this weave, since I've got a weave uh, texture for the pants. And in its texture slot here, let's come over and give it a new image. Click open. And we'll go into the reference folder here and where do I have that? Here. I've got some woven linen here. And then let's switch our brush mapping from tiled to stencil. And now we're going to work on painting both the color and the bump information for the pants here. So I kind of want these to be like burlap or something like that. I'm going to bring this up to white a bit. I'm going to change to my color details. Increase the brush size just a hair. Strength should be okay. I'm going to turn on face selection mode and make sure I choose just the pants. And now let's start painting here and see what we can do. So now I'm just painting down on the color information. Now I need to switch the alpha on here so I can see what I'm painting. And now I'm going to go back to the bump and let's do the same thing here. And apply a little bit of bump information on those pants. Nice. Paint that and back to bump and paint that. Lay down the color, lay down the bump. That's kind of fun. I don't know why, that's just kind of satisfying. <laughs> all right, so the next thing I probably better do is save all of my images. 
I'm just going to come over here to the slots tab and click on save all images. So that's one way to use the bump information is to use it by um, painting through a stencil. And you can also use that same stencil to paint color information as well. So in the next video, I think what we'll do is work on painting a specular map. And maybe we'll also take a look at baking out our color map, combining these two layers into one color map, and also baking out our bump information to a normal map. So hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.